In this video, we're going to be talking about the pharmacology of systemic medication. Now, drugs can be administered or ingested by various routes. They can go in enterally, which means through the GI system. So we're talking either by mouth or, in some cases, rectally. Some rectal suppositories have systemic action. For instance, ones that are used for nausea. Systemic drugs can be given topically. Maybe we're talking about lotions and creams. We're talking about patches, some of the uh, contraceptive patches and the patches that people use for heart medication. And another form of topical medication is inhalers, typical of use with asthma. And the third route of administration is parenterally. We've got the shots, the IM, the sub-Q, the IV medication, but we've also got um, the sublingual and the buccal medication because even though they go in the mouth, they don't go to the GI system. They are absorbed directly into the vascular beds under the tongue and in the cheek. Therefore, they don't have the first pass effect, which has to do with going to the stomach to be broken down. Digestion. The drugs that do go to the stomach have to be broken down. Quite often that's called dissolution. And they're getting broken down into a form that can be absorbed by the body. Also, biotransformation occurs in the liver where the drug is further broken down into metabolites that can be used in treatment in the body. Now these metabolites cross into the bloodstream and while they're in the bloodstream they either travel to the kidneys and then are eliminated or some of them actually make it to the tissues um, where they are picked up by the receptors and the treatment for the condition is begun. Receptors are structures on the cells that tell the cells to do something. They can be agonists where they bind to the receptor and produce a therapeutic effect. For instance, it binds to a receptor and says, hey, we've lost a lot of blood, you better make the blood pressure go up. So raise blood pressure. Or the drugs can be antagonists, where they bind to the receptor and block its action. They prevent the cell from doing anything. Example, hey, your blood pressure is too high. Stop doing what you were doing. Most drugs are eliminated through the kidneys. In a normal person, that's not a big deal. But if the person has uh, any kind of kidney damage, kidney disease, um, the drugs can't be eliminated effectively, so they build up in the body. Okay, so we've just talked about drugs that come into the body through the enteral route. What if we give a systemic medication through um, a topical or a parenteral route? Well, topically, um, and the IM and the sub-Q, the drug has to soak through something. It has to soak through the skin or the fat tissues or the muscles or whatever to get to the bloodstream. With IV medications, we're giving drugs directly to the bloodstream. Biotransformation of some sort may still occur, and the kidneys are still the way most of these drugs are eliminated. The speed of absorption depends on the route of administration. If this drug has to soak through the skin to get through the fat tissue and everything to get to the um, bloodstream, it's going to take a longer time than if you inject the drug directly into the intravenous space. Once the, body, the drug is in the bloodstream, it needs to be transported to the different parts of the body. Well, three things are going to affect that distribution. That's protein binding, lipid solubility, and circulation. So what we're talking about is drugs that are already in the bloodstream, and what is it that's hampering or, or assisting this drug to get to the tissues um, that it needs to get to? 
Well, the first one is protein binding. If a drug is bound by protein, it's not available to treat the body. Some drugs are very susceptible to this. The second one is lipid solubility. Well, the cell membrane has a high lipid concentration, so drugs that are highly lipid soluble can more easily cross into the cell. And the third thing is circulation. Medications depend on the circulation to get to the target tissues. Well, blood volume is going to make a difference. If you have a low blood volume, you're not delivering a lot of this blood to the tissues. Vascular resistance is the same deal. A lot of vascular resistance, constricted vascular space, only a small spurts of blood are getting to the target tissues at a time. And cardiac output, same idea. The heart's not putting out a lot. It's not effectively pumping the blood to circulate around the body. The drug's not circulating around the body to get to the target tissues. So let's look at everything we've talked about so far. Drugs get into the body through the enteral system, a topical medication, or uh, parenterally. All three of ways the drug eventually makes it into the bloodstream. From there, the drug can go to the target tissues and have a therapeutic effect, or the drugs can go to the kidneys and be eliminated, or the one we didn't talk about is some drugs actually go into storage. They uh, are stored in some of the fat cells in various um, ways. There's adverse reactions to medications. These are undesirable effects. Sometimes they're predictable, sometimes they're not. And when we talk about side effects, those are adverse reactions, but they typically are less severe. They're more minor. Just because uh, some of the drug is in the system doesn't mean that it's enough to be therapeutic. The concentration of the drug in the blood needs to reach a certain level before you're going to see some kind of therapeutic response to the drug. Now from the time the client takes to the drug until we start getting a therapeutic response, that's called the onset of action. The drug is entering the blood, it's building up, and when it finally starts to work, that's your onset of action, when it finally reaches that therapeutic level. The drug continues to increase until it gets to a peak level in the blood. And the drug remains active in the body as long as its concentration remains above that therapeutic level in the bloodstream. Now, therapeutic index. Just because the blood concentration of a drug is above the therapeutic concentration level doesn't mean it's safe. It might be too high. That's toxic. And we measure that by looking at the therapeutic index. That's the ratio between the toxic and therapeutic concentrations in the blood. So when we look at this graph, we can see that the dose is too high because it builds up in the blood. The concentration raises to a, high, to a level that's above the toxic level. So we're going to see damage to the patient from this particular dose of drug. The patient needs a lower dose. Now, a low therapeutic index means that there's very little difference between how much you need to get a positive effect and how much is too much. It's too fine a point of difference. So here's a graph showing that. This drug is quite hazardous. You got to get a fairly high level of drug in the body to get any reaction, any kind of therapeutic reaction, but just a couple steps above that is a toxic level. So you're looking at, if you really have to give this drug, you got to watch these people very carefully for toxic reactions.